This is one of my test meters, the Isotech IDM91, which I purchased many years ago, probably 20, 20 or more years ago from RS Components in the UK. Um, it has suffered um, a small catastrophe insofar as the current range, I haven't checked the AC current range, but the DC current range doesn't work anymore. Now, I suspect it's because um, it's seen rather more amps than it was designed to. So something's either burnt or damaged or with a bit of luck, there might even be a fuse inside which has gone. So we're going to take it apart. If you've got one of these, I'll show you how it comes apart. This would be a very quick video because I'm not anticipating any major catastrophes. And if there is a major catastrophe, then it could be quite an epic video. It didn't come initially in this case, but it's protected it from a number of mechanical catastrophes, i.e. meter falling on the floor. Um, well, that's the usual one. So that's how it looked when you, when you buy it. To get it apart, you need to make sure, first of all, that the switch is in the off position. Not for any other reason. In, it could be set to anywhere, but you need to know where this lines up in order to get it back together again. So on the back we have three screws so we'll whip those out. It's been a day of things going wrong. My or one of my larger tripods has just fallen apart. Um, one of the quality pieces of plastic on it. Bear in mind it, it wasn't a cheap. Oh, it's a bit loose that screw. It's probably from when I replaced the battery last time. Didn't turn to screw it up properly. But I've not um, seen these meters in New Zealand. But there it says RS components. And generally, well certainly in the past, I haven't used them for many years, but in the past they had a an amazing array of components but you did pay a bit of a premium price for it. Less important in those days when I was in business, because the company paid for them, but now I'm only a poor pensioner, I have to pay for things. So, Right. The battery's in here. Oh yes, yeah, so that's I remember now. The um, battery um, plug all fell apart. And as I needed the meter rather urgently at the time, I thought I would just um, solder the wires on. I know that's not good, but that's what I did. There, you can see the quality of my workmanship. <laughs> it's one of those jobs where you think, right, next time I'm in the, in the shop, I must get a new one. But um, it's been like that for probably about six years now so it shows how long the batteries last right we need to take this top board off i think what i'll do is put this on here so that it doesn't scratch the front and it looks like we've got it wants to just take this top board off so we've just got one two three screws Where's the other screw? Nice views of my hands. Now, just in case this isn't the right way to do it, let's do it carefully. And it looks like it. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was saying about the switch position. Obviously, the PCB here doesn't know which position this is in. So if it's in the wrong position and you put it back together, all the ranges will be completely shot and um, you'll only have to take it apart again. 
I've already found the fault. I've just taken it out actually. But this is the fuse that goes in there and is part of the current range. The main current range just has this shunt. But for all the other current ranges, this fuse, which is a special 600 volt, one amp quick blow fuse. And the temptation is to squish these together and put a cheap fuse in because this fuse, I went and got one yesterday from JCAR here in New Zealand and it was $11.40 for a fuse. Uh, I nearly had to go to the hospital because I thought I was going to have a heart attack when I, <laughs> when I found the problem. But that's what it is and I must admit in the better meters you do get a fuse like this and in the cheap meters you don't have a fuse and it burns all the track up and you throw your meter away. So I've got a replacement fuse and we're going to pop that in nice and tight yeah and we'll put it back together and see if it works actually that doesn't look the right size does it let's compare it well it's exactly the size of the one that came out so why does that seem like it doesn't fit looks awfully close to those diodes let's just squeeze those in a bit well it does fit how close is that very close to that diode that doesn't look very good to me oh I can't move it because the diode is squashed right down to the PCB yeah it's awfully close isn't it but saying that it's been like that for ever since and the fuse here does stick out of the end a little bit I didn't push it any further well actual fact it won't short on there that seems awfully close to me oh well that's the way it is so perhaps I shouldn't say how wonderful this meter is after all other than the fact it's lasted all this time okay let's put it back together now I do have to line up I think we're a bit too far zoomed in here I do have to line up those board pins with the socket so we'll make sure that that's lined up good that's in. So we'll screw it all together again and see if it works. I didn't bother to show you me screwing the thing together because I didn't think that was grossly exciting. We'll just have a quick look at the fuse I've taken out and see if it is actually blown. It'd be embarrassing if it wasn't, wouldn't it? Just check the meter. Yep. Yep. Oh, thank goodness for that. I know you get a bit absent-minded when you get older, but I didn't really want you to see me making a fool of myself. Right, now the easiest way to test the current range, because I don't instantly have a current source ready, so I'll just get a battery. We will have a look at a performance 9-volt battery and see I'll put it on a higher current range of uh, 200 milliamps because that won't supply 200 milliamps in a in a lifetime let's just check the volts on it first that the meter is actually working it's very hard doing this around the camera that's why I don't tend to make videos like this 8.96 volts well as I was kicking about in my parts drawer I think that's probably okay.
current you usually have to go on to a different range. We'll go on to the yeah, 200 milliamp range and just briefly short out the battery, always good. 110 milliamps, 101 milliamps. I won't want to drain it any further than that. But at least we fixed the meter anyway. So I don't blow it up again. We'll pop that back in the right holes. Well, that was a quick and simple, if not horrendously expensive repair. So I'll, I'll have to try not to do that anymore. <laughs> Thanks for watching.